All right, this is going to be a discussion about the Star Trek novel Best Destiny by Diane Carey. This book uh, came out in 1992, and it's essentially a James T. Kirk origin story. So it's kind of an interesting book in its place in the timeline. Um, it begins immediately after the events of Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. So we have Kirk and his crew are on their way to be decommissioned. They receive an emergency distress signal, and they go to investigate. The ship is, you know, it's not in tip-top shape. It's kind of uh, beat up, having just battled it out with General Chang. And then Kirk is having flashbacks to his youth. And he was a troubled child who was on his way for, um, let's just say, a bad life. I mean, he's trending towards the dark side. Uh, young Kirk is James T. You know, uh, James T. Kirk as a youth is really a jerk. For the first half of the book, anyways, uh, he's really not a likable character. He's a snot-nosed brat. Um, you kind of want to just slap him. I mean, he's he's just miserable. It is understandable because this book does delve into a little bit of what happened to James Kirk as a teenager. He's resentful towards his father, George, who is a big part of this novel because of what happened in the Star Trek episode from the original series, Conscience of the King. The whole thing with Kodos the Executioner and Kirk witnessing the murder or the extermination of thousands of colonists under Kodos's order and his father not being there. So this is a father's and son story. We even have uh, Captain Robert April, who was in the original series or in the um, animated series. He appears in this book and plays a big role in it as well. So it has a lot to do with mentors, with fathers and sons, and I commend it for that. I think that that part of the book was excellent. Uh, I really like the whole idea of the importance of strong male role models. So the book gets points on that part for me. The first half of the book, I, I, it was okay. You know, I mean, it, it strung me along. Chapter 18 is when this book really changed. I think chapter 18, chapter 19, those chapters of the book were really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed them a lot. I think that they were fantastic. I think, uh, unfortunately, towards the end of the book, because it's it's flashing between the past and the present, you know, is kind of where I just feel like the book didn't it didn't stick the landing. Um, there's a character in the book, he's the main villain, if you want to call him a villain. His name is Roy Moss, and he's from Kirk's you know, childhood, his first adventure in space with his father, George. And uh, he ends up factoring into the end, or the conclusion of the novel as well. And I really feel like it got trapped in trying to make another nemesis from Kirk's past, you know. I mean, Kirk is not Batman. You know, he doesn't, like, the whole idea of Kirk having a rogues gallery, like Batman's got Riddler and, you know, Joker and all these villains. Everybody knows Kirk's nemesis is Khan. Okay, so to try to introduce another rogue into his past or another villain. We've already dealt with Kodos the Executioner. 
had various uh, Klingons from the original series. Um, so trying to make this Roy Moss character be another person from Kirk's past, I, I don't know. It, it just didn't work for me. I felt like the ending was kind of a combination of the ending of Search for Spock combined with other elements from the uh, tropes, you know, the tropes of the Star Trek uh, films where they're all dealing with the, with the, the age of the character and the regrets of youth and, and trying to deal with, you know, retirement and age and, and all those things. And uh, it's just like, I didn't feel like the book needed the big, you know, ending like that. For me, I just love the characters. And if you, you know, for all its faults, Star Trek V, um, me seeing Kirk, Spock, and McCoy sitting around a fire, a campfire together, singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat, <laughs> I love it, man. I mean, I much would have liked to have seen the book in that way. Like, if Kirk was just telling a campfire story to his friends about his youth, instead of having to have the big epic, you know, ending with universal consequences for all of mankind, uh, I think it could have been dialed down just a tad. Um, other things I don't like about the book is it was humorless. I, I realized that there was something missing from it, and it was the humor. It was dark, it was gritty, and it was humorless. And uh, it's a book from 1992, so I was kind of shocked to see just how violent it was and how much language was in the the novel as well. Um, it, it was like Kurtzman track almost. I was like, man, this is really dark. Like... Uh, this is like rated R Trek here. And it definitely does not fit in. You know, this was written years before Star Trek Enterprise ever came out. So there's elements of this which are retconned by this television series. For instance, uh, Robert April being the founder of the Starship program. And um, also... George Kirk naming the Starship Enterprise, the Enterprise, uh, those are totally inconsistent with, you know, Enterprise, which I do like Enterprise. I'm one of the few people that likes Enterprise, okay? I gave it a chance. I think it's a good show. Is it dated? Yeah, it's an early 2000s Star Trek series, so it's got problems with it i'm not gonna talk about that right now i'm just gonna say best destiny what would i give this book i would give it probably a three out of five maybe a three and a half it's got really high highs you know that are just like man this is like peak star trek especially like chapter 18 that chapter was fantastic i just wish that the rest of the book would have lived up to that uh, i don't feel like the book sticks the landing i think it kind of falls apart in the last 60 pages but uh you know i overall i enjoyed it would i recommend reading it yeah i think this is a pretty good star trek novel um but uh, i wouldn't expect you know uh, of the three star trek books i reviewed so far uh, I think this one is the least. I would definitely recommend reading Imzadi or uh, Federation over this book. But um, I don't regret re reading it. I had a good time. It was enjoyable for me. So if you're a Star Trek fan, you like Star Trek, especially classic Star Trek, you know, Kirk, Spock, McCoy, this is a good one to check out. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching Live long and prosper.